Mm. So, puppy, what do you call two cigars that want to live together? Very smoky. <laughs> <laughs> Close, but no cigars. Cohabitation. So funny. <laughs> I'm not going to stick around for the entire episode, so we have an expert here today. <laughs> Hello! Welcome back to... Hey, I thought we were doing this. What's well, a safe word? <laughs> I'm Mr. Christopher. <laughs> and I'm Eric, also known online as Crimson Leather Dad. And today, we're going to talk about cigars. And I'm still here, but I'm, I am i don't like cigars. We realize that cigar smoking can be dangerous and that everyone has their vices, so just deal with us as we talk about a topic that's smoking hot. Just like you, puppy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Pick a side. Pick a side. <laughs> Bye, babe. Down. Bye, babe. Is this annoying? No, it's a little annoying. annoying. I'm going to no, burn you. Like this. Okay, Eric, tell me about it now. Yeah, yeah. The fun thing about cigars is you can burn people. Ah. And today we're going to talk about cigars, which is my favorite fetish. <laughs> As I get ashed on. <laughs> well, everyone knows I like smoking. Uh, the puppy, not so much. So he kind of took a backseat on this one. I'm right here. <laughs> right here. He's still in the background barking, yeah, however. Yeah, I can still see and hear everything. <laughs> so while the puppy will be... Oops, there goes my ash. <laughs> the puppy will be in the background. Uh, I brought Eric on, who I met at Smoke Out, to talk a little bit more about cigars and what makes them hot. But first, a smoking hot deal from Helix Sleep. Mm. We all have our pleasures in life. Some like playing video games. <laughs> Others enjoy snacking or eating. Some enjoy a nice cigar. Wait, 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 no, no, there's no smoking in bed. What are you doing? You said this was all about smoking. No, I said smoking hot deals. Give, give me that. Mm. All right, lying? Sleep. Or oh, sleep. sleep. Yeah. <clears throat> but what I really enjoy is a nice, long, firm sleep from today's sponsor, Helix Sleep. So my sleep routine usually includes a good snack and a scar. No. My sleep routine used to have a bunch of uncomfortable kinks. <laughs> <sighs> but now I sleep like a rock with the right mattress from Helix. <sighs> Supposed to. Hey, there's more lines. Everybody's different, and Helix knows that. So they made a sleep quiz that matches your body type and sleep preference to the perfect mattress for you. And if you sleep with a partner, you can take the sleep quiz together. After taking the quiz, we got Daddy a Midnight Lux in a Queen. I'm sorry, what'd you just call me? Queen. The best part about all of this is that Helix delivers your mattress to your door for free. And it's boxed up in a nice fun spiral you can watch unpack and grow. Plus, they want to make sure that you love your mattress, so they actually give you a 100 night sleep guarantee. Helix mattresses are comfortable. Comfortable. Reliable. Reliable. Sexy. Sex. Oh my god, stop So if you want to get your own smoking hot deal, go to helixsleep.com, offer code WHAT. For up to $200 off and two free pillows. By supporting them, you support our show and give me the cigar. No smoking in bed. No, 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 no. I know that cigars is a big fetish of mine. What is it about it that you like? So for me, I've been into cigars for probably about six years as long as I've been smoking them. But before that even, I always liked the aesthetic of it. Mm. I mean, can you tell me what it looks like possibly? <laughs> a little phallic. <laughs> they are very phallic. Like most people, I never complain about a nice big one. A dick. It's a dick. It's a dick. It's a dick. Shh. I mean, you can't uh, say that on YouTube. Oh. Puppy, don't be an asshole. Hey. <laughs> there also is a very hyper masculine aspect to it as well. You know, a big leatherman smoking a big fat cigar. Just. Ooh, come on, baby. Yeah. It's lit. Yeah. The puppy may not be in front of the camera, but don't worry, the puns will flow plenty. I mean, I could be in front of the camera, but it would be- Get out, it out, be, yes. hey, clear hey, frame, hey, clear frame. Puppy, puppy. For me, when I came out, I was into leather and the imagery of the hot leather guy. Thomas Finland, Thomas Finland, yeah. I also like the smell, the aroma, brings me back to childhood and being around masculine energy. Mm -hmm. And it smokes, pairs so nicely with leather. It just smells good on leather gloves, on leather boots. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, 
me. So I met you last year at Smoke Out, which is a big smoking convention in Las Vegas. Yeah, cigars, pipes, it's just like a general smokers like theme convention. Primarily pretty much 100% male oriented. That is not to say that female can't smoke cigars or pipes as well. Obviously anybody can smoke. Tell them a little bit about yourself. So I live up in Seattle and I'm actually one half of a company known as Cockeye Kink. We make custom harnesses and fetish wear and such. These suspenders are one of our work. And for me, cigars is also one of my top fetishes as well. It's been something that nearly as long as I've been into leather, I've also been into cigars and pipes. Probably within the last six or so years, I've really been kind of kicking into high gear and you know, being a bit more serious about it. Wait, can I ask you a question? Sure. Well, first of all, so like a lot of movies like with, with like the mafia or like the, yeah, yeah. Mm, see? Mm. Yeah, and they always smoke it with like this weird face. Like what is your smoking face? My smoking? Yeah, I, I, yeah. How do you I'm smoke? a puffer. When it comes to smoking a cigar, you don't ever want to inhale it. You want to draw it into the mouth, and that's where you get the flavor and the aroma from it. Inhale to the back of your throat, release. If you inhale it, you run the risk of getting a little queasy. Yeah, it's always fun to teach someone new how to smoke a cigar, and the first thing they do is smoke it like a cigarette, mm -hmm. where they inhale it into their lungs. And <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't do that. Why did you look at me when you said that? Because <laughs> you're right in front <laughs> of me. <laughs> So knowing how to smoke is important, but how do you choose the cigar you smoke? That can actually be even more important because you don't want to start off with a very strong cigar. There are three basic categories that most cigars fall under. There's mild, there's medium, and there's bold. And you want to start off with something along like a natural. It's going to be a very light flavor. It's going to be very mild. It's going to be easy to smoke. Then as you get experience, you can eventually work your way up to a more medium or bold, which will be stronger. You'll get some more flavor out of it, but it can be very overpowering if you're not used to it. So you're saying bold is bolder flavor. Bold is beautiful, but you oh. have to work to it. <laughs> bold is beautiful. <laughs> So there's different sizes in cigars. How do those run? So they run off of a pretty standard measurement uh, algorithm of number of inches and then the gauge. So, so inch first? For something like this would be a seven inch cigar. And this is also a 70 ring gauge, which means that it is 70 64ths of an inch as far as diameter goes. Oh my God, that's a lot of math. So what you're saying is you're both size queens. <laughs> no, we're just comparing cigars, yeah. not. I mean, you I've said seen, it. I've seen you compare many things. <laughs> so the outer casing of a cigar is called the wrapper, mm -hmm. and there's natural and Maduro. So a natural cigar is gonna be more on that mild side that I right. mentioned. It's gonna be a light flavor, whereas a Maduro is gonna be a, a darker cigar, kind of similar to like this one, that it's gonna have that strong, bold flavor to it that can be very overpowering if you're not an experienced cigar smoker. <laughs> so we are just smoking a regular shaped cigar, but they'd come in different shapes. Like a torpedo would be tapered at both ends? Yeah, so for a torpedo, actually it would be something like this, where it gets its name because it's shaped like the tip of a torpedo. There's also box press cigars, which the name kind of implies it, are square shaped because they're formed into a box. Are you thinking outside the box or <laughs> inside the box? It's hip to be square. It's very humidor <laughs> out here. You're so humidor. Oh my God, it's so humidor in here. <laughs> take off your wrapper. Now to start smoking a cigar, you have to cut one end, right? Yes. And there's different ways of cutting it. You can either cut it, punch it, slit it, tear it off with your teeth. Uh, why, why so aggressive? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like you were saying, there are multiple ways to cut them. For example, we have a traditional cigar cutter right here that will just cut off the very tip of it. And when you are, you actually just wanna cut off the very top of the cigar leaving a bit of that taper there. And correct me if I'm wrong, but do they use this for circumcision as well? No! Now, if you're a fister, would you rather punch your cigar with one of these? I mean, I hear that they always love punching. So with a punch like this, what you're doing is you're just creating a small hole in the end of it to help with easy ventilation. You're gonna have less likelihood that it's gonna start unwrapping possibly. For example, when you traditionally cut it, 
the tip of it could start to unwrap a little bit, a punch is gonna be a way to get around that. But it doesn't always work for all types of cigars. You can't punch a torpedo because the tip. Also wetting it before you cut it, does that help it, the wrapper not unwrap? Yeah, um, usually whenever I light a cigar, I will wet the tip of both ends first a little bit in the mouth, just like, just ring it around a little bit. Just Can you do that again? Come on. Yeah. Yeah, daddy. Okay, so what happens if they get it too slobbery though? Because I've seen some people like literally like licking it like a lollipop. Yeah, I've smoked some cigars too and it's just wet. They've been chewing down on it and it's a little mushy. Yeah, if it's too wet, then you might want to throw it back in your humidor for a little bit, let it dry out a touch. Same with the other end when you're lighting it. You don't want to have it too dry or you run the risk of burning the tobacco when you're lighting it. So it's kind of like kissing. Kind of like kissing. Some people have more saliva than others when they kiss. So it's a big wet sloppy kiss or a dry kiss. Mm -hmm. You just got to be a little tender with it so it doesn't break. Come on, baby. Hey, puppy. Yes? You know how to light a cigar if you don't have any matches? Well, I imagine you just put it over the stove and you just kind of, you, you actually like, you know, you just bake it a little, no? No, cut it in half and it'll be a little lighter. You're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, how do you light a cigar? I've seen many people do it different ways. There's a couple different ways. One of the most common and convenient ways is a butane torch, kind of like this one, mm -hmm. where it's just a gas butane. And usually when you're lighting it, you don't ever want to have it actually touch the cigar as you're lighting it, because you can run a risk of, like I said, burning the tobacco. So you want to have it just off of the cigar and just puff it and slowly roll it and it'll eventually evenly light. So yeah, and a lot of people don't like using butane because it um, affects the taste. The flavor can sometimes, yeah. So they prefer wooden matches. Mm -hmm. Which, and, wow. So have you ever been smoking a cigar and had it like burning more on one side, uneven? Yeah, sometimes the burn will trail. Yeah, so one of the things you can do with that, like this, my cigar has started to, um, so the wrapper is going to get longer on this end. To even it out, you can just hit that side. I can't imagine if you're OCD and you start smoking a cigar. Lots of guys are very, really? very about their cigar burning evenly mm -hmm. on all sides. Because you want to have that aesthetic as well of the nice, long, even ash. And if you start having a trail, that can screw up the mentality that you might have. Mm, I'm glad you said that. So what about the ash? Usually you don't want to touch the ash until it's about an inch long when you're smoking a cigar. That's usually the optimal time to tap it off the first time. So you're saying that it's kind of normal not to knock the ash off right away? Mm -hmm. I believe they say don't knock it until you try it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, so you just touched on ash play. It wouldn't be what's the safe word if we didn't talk about sex. How do you use cigars during sex? Well, let's start at the tip and work our way down. Mm -hmm. So starting with the ash, it's probably one of the most usable parts of a cigar when it comes to play because there's a lot of things you can do with it, anywhere from feeding it to people to having it tapped out in your hand and doing stuff with it from there. It can also be rubbed on the skin. So there are lots of things you can do with role play with cigars, like you can have your sub do cigar service, get your cigar ready for you. Is he literally rolling it for you? <laughs> is that a role play? <laughs> if he is, then If I... he's a very skilled sub, he could roll it for you. Roll. Yes. <laughs> And sometimes you can also have them start by lighting the cigar so that way you as the dominant in the situation don't have to worry about that. And mm. Just let them get it all served for you and then you get to enjoy the smoke by itself. Let them do the work. Exactly, that's what they're there for, right? <laughs> that's what they're there for. Um, excuse me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Puppies aren't very good at this. <laughs> mm -mm. Or mine excuse isn't. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> you already touched on ash service. Explain that a little more. So, like I said, ashes can be one of the most versatile parts of a cigar. And as far as service, it can be anywhere from using a sub as an ashtray, whether mm -hmm. you tap the ash out onto their hand, onto their back, onto their tongue, and they eat it. Rubbing it on their skin can be a thing because it can have a very grainy texture, so it's very sensory in that respect. <laughs> <laughs> 
The puppy loves that. I'm puppy, lick no, this. No, no, come, no, lick, no. come lick the ash. <laughs> no, I already had some ash browns this morning. I'm good. And also they make gags that have ashtrays that come out of them. So you can just have your sub kneeling there and use them as an ashtray. It can help play into the humiliation factor. So there's a lot of cross in that as well. That's hot. Daddy, Daddy uses my ash all the time. Are, are you usually the butt of his jokes? <laughs> He's usually the butt of mine. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Wait, wait, okay, so that doesn't sound safe. Like, I've seen you do it before, but how, how safe is actually ingesting or putting ashes into the person's body? Good question. There is a safe way to do it, mm -hmm. and there are wrong ways to do it. Like, one of the wrong ways I've seen is someone standing over their sub, like, three feet away from their mouth and trying to tap it in. Mm -hmm. That ash is just going to go all over the place and into their eyes, and it's not going to hit the target. It's going to be bad. If your sub is being fed the ash, then there is a proper technique. So usually you would want to have at least the inch-long ash because you want it to break off naturally. You don't want to force it off. And you don't want it to be too hot. Yes. So when you do break it off, if they are ingesting it, you want to have them hold their mouth open for a little while. So let it cool down for a sec. Put the tip of the ash on their tongue and just roll slowly till it breaks off on their tongue. Is that the disclaimer song? Mm -hmm. And it'll just break off delicately and sit there. Let it cool down for a second before you tell them to close their mouth. And it does have a bit of a grainy texture. It can be a little salty, but it's not harmful at all because literally everything that could harm you has been burned off. It's just pure carbon at that point. I kind of like the taste of it. It kind of tastes like Pop Rocks. It has a little sulfur tingly Sorry, thing to what? it. It does. <laughs> it no. tastes like Pop Rocks. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 sulfur cringles in your mouth. Is it Top Rocks or Pop Rocks? Top Rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that King Henry V actually created the ashtray? Like he had so much tobacco coming from overseas that he created like, not, not very pretty ashtrays, but that's how ashtrays became a thing. Oh. And then as women started getting into like cigars and cigarettes, they actually started creating like what you have there, like little fancy ashtrays with designs and whatnot. My little pig ashtray? Yeah. It was the women who came along and made ashtrays more fun and, and just creative. So actually the most important thing about temperature play is having a steady hand and building the trust with it. Yes. Watching the sub's reaction mm -hmm. and gauging. Yeah, so I would say trust and steady hand are just as important because you don't want someone who's got a shaky hand because you're gonna accidentally burn them. And it does take a lot of trust, especially if you run the risk of burning somebody. And the longer the ash on the cigar, the closer you can get to the skin because that part is not as hot as the cherry, which is the red burning part at the tip of the cigar. Usually I would do temperature play when I don't have very much of an ash on me or on the cigar because you don't want it to just break off. You're, so that's perfect. Yeah, you're there for more for the sensoriness of it. Ooh. So you would have a very short tip cigar right here. And I actually sometimes will use my hand as a brace. And then from there, just hold it and run it along the skin. You would also want to test it on yourself just so you know what you're inflicting upon your Ow. sub. Careful. <laughs> Temperature play. <laughs> Actually, it's not that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. <laughs> so if you're done talking out of your ash, <laughs> what about smoke play? What can you do with smoke? So there's a few different ways that you can incorporate smoke into play. There's shotgunning it into their mouth. A lot of people will use gas masks like this and they'll have a hose to it and either the dom will blow the smoke into it or I've seen some that they'll actually have an attachment where wow. they can just put the cigar on the end of the hose and then the sub is only smoking it from there. Can you believe we're in San Francisco and have no hose? And I think there's two hose right now in front of me. <laughs> so while I was here in San Francisco, actually, there's a cigar store that I wanted to go to real bad, but unfortunately, you know, it's been a while, and that store is apparently now a clothing store. Oh shit, clothes, but no cigar. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> so to wrap this up, anyone can smoke a cigar. Yes. So it's not limited just to men. No, anybody can be a cigar smoker. Anybody can be a cigar dom or sub. 
it's really just, do you like it? Awesome, cool. There will be a community for you out there somewhere. You just need to look for it. And most people that I've interacted with in the cigars community are very welcoming to it as well because they understand the brotherhood or the sisterhood, the familial aspect of being a cigar person. There's a bond about cigars. Even in the 90s, it was a huge hot trend for women to smoke cigars. Exactly. Yeah. So, and the other point I'd want to stress is it takes time to learn how to do it and don't be afraid to try. We all looked awkward at first. Yeah, if you go into any cigar store that has a nice big walk-in humidor, the people there are usually very well educated. And if you just say, I'm interested in starting to smoke cigars, where do I begin? Most times they'll be welcoming and they'll be like, yeah, let me show you what we got. Let me, you know, tell me what you want and they'll help cater to your taste. What's the moral of the story for today's episode? Don't be an asshole. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a lot. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your knowledge. My pleasure. Where can people find you? So you can find me at cockeyekink.com. Um, we also have a Facebook, a Twitter, Instagram, all that. But me personally, it's at Crimson Leather Dad. It's all linked down below. It's all linked down below. So Eric, every episode we end with a safe word. What's your safe word? That's usually what mine is too. Oh, right. <laughs> What's your safe word? Asylum. Is good that word we're gonna find you in an asylum? <laughs> I... After this episode, yes. He's <laughs> driving us crazy. crazy. Ah! <laughs> so if you like this episode, please leave a comment down below. Like the or hit the like button. Also make sure to hit the bell for notifications as well. Make sure you update them every episode that comes out on what's a safe word. What he said. And we'll see you here next time on What's a Safe Word. Bye! Bye. So fun fact, when you are smoking a cigars, you can tell who's talking the most because their cigar will stop <laughs> staying lit. You have to keep inhaling uh -huh, uh -huh. for your cigar to uh -huh. stay lit. <laughs> so what you're saying is... I talk a lot. <laughs> your words, not mine.